Welcome back to the shipyard. Today, Scout 255. Now, a little bit of history. This ship was a blind booster during the Resistance is Futile OP series. It was in the same brick as the Temur, the Prakash, the Reloris Sankur, and it wasn't the Temur, it was the Taukir. Box Marauder. Uh, so that's the five. Um, you don't expect greatness out of any of those ships. Some defensive, none truly offensive, uh, some offensive. But uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm getting off topic. The Scout 255. It's a, a board... Scout Cube. It was built even back when Scout Cube's Borg ships could turn and go in one turn. Uh, one round. Turn and turn at the same time. Anyways, uh, as such, it was super powerful. Now, mm, eh. uh, actually played with the Scout 255, not by choice. Uh, because I drew it as a blind booster. Uh, a few months ago, we were doing a, an event with Resistance's Futile Boosters, and um, boy, it's about as bad as I remembered it. And uh, it really makes you glad that we don't have some of those boosters anymore. But nevertheless, we press on. And... Uh, Maybe you have the opportunity to pick one up. Maybe you haven't thought about this ship in over a year since it came out. Actually, more like two or three years since it came out. Um, that's a little sad to think about. Uh, this is a 3-3-2-4. Three, three, yeah, two-hull. That makes you vulnerable to all kinds of stuff. Uh, with a crew tech weapon Borg slot. Um... Of course, with the caveat that you can't deploy a Borg upgrade of 5-plus to the ship, even though you kind of want to. At least now there's cheaper ones. Um, and then the ability here. If there's a scan token beside your ship during the modified defense die step of the combat phase, you'll get to roll plus one defense die. Not an option. You just roll plus one defense die. I have a little history with this ship. Uh, before Worlds 2017? No, 2016. I was at 2017, 2016. Um, I said that Scout 255 would be in the winning build. Is this even 2015? Might have been 2015. Yeah. Anyways, it's the one where Will and I did predictions on State of the Federation. Well, I was really close. It was Scout 608. 255. I thought defense would be nice, but no, I was totally wrong. Scout 608 for the extra maneuverability. Yeah, that's a good ship. 255 is a bad ship. Because nobody wants an extra defense die when you have a scan token. Scan token you're taking for other synergy or for offense. You know, break through their defense. But for you to get an extra defense die, it's not helping you. It's, it's doing a little bit of A and a little bit of B. But what you want is a lot of A or a lot of B. This is a game where you specialize, not diversify. Or if you diversify, you diversify well in two things. But this does a little bit of both. Not good for anybody. Anyways, yeah, it's a bad ship. Generic. We're not even going to touch the generic. Uh, you get a tactical drone here. Um, it's putting it very mildly. This is a two-cost you end up with two drone tokens, and uh, 
During the activation phase before you move, you may spend one drone token to remove one ox power from beside your ship. Woo! Yay! No. Um, at skill two, getting two chances to do this, there are not many ships I can think of this actually being useful for. Actually, probably none. Um, you are better off uh, in Fed taking secondary impulse reactor. In just about any other faction, you are just better off not pulling a red on a red. I, I guess it's fringe tech, not actually a tech upgrade, but game tech, against somebody dropping an ox power token on your ship when you've selected a red maneuver. Because the timing here is explicit that it's during the activation phase before you move. So it's no longer at the start of the activation phase. You do get that little extra timing, which is nice because the card actually specifies when it happens. This may be one of the only cards that gets you a delayed uh, start, a delayed timing instance. Still not worth it. Uh, no talents here. One tech, access terminal. Uh, it's a two-point non-unique card. When, you're re when you are required to spend any number of drone tokens, you may disable this card To spend those drone tokens from your ship and or any friendly ships within range 1 to 2 of your ship, you may divide spending those drone tokens between your ships however you like. <sighs> Still got to spend the drone tokens. You'd be better off if this card said you get to spend one less. That's Magnus Hansen. But this is Magnus Hansen in tech form. But it's not. This is... You get to spend them from other places. So maybe you run Locutus somewhere? I don't know. But you still have to have ships within range 1 to 2. Don't like the card. Bad card. Especially on a blind booster. This is a terrible card. Uh, because you probably weren't running Borg. Anyways. Um... Our weapon, Proton Beam, four points, three attack dice, range one only. So you're losing an attack die at range one to fire this weapon, first off. Uh, attack, disable the card. All damage inflicted by this attack ignores shields. Okay, fine, that's a little pro. Uh, but it costs five more points for any non borg ship. Okay, so no quality. I gotta disable... I don't get an extra die, but I get to bypass your shields if I hit. Not worth four points. Maybe worth two? Two? I could, I could pay two for that. Um, it's like the phased polar on beam on Dominion ships. They bypass shields, and now it costs two, and that's okay. Um still like to see a disable, or a, sorry, not a disable, a time token version. It would be playable. Uh, Alright, now we get to the uh, redeeming parts of this pack, and if you don't have them, you want them. Our crew, one. Four points. Action. Discard this card to perform this action. For each damage your ship suffers this round, disable one of your active shields instead of destroying it. Disabled shields, good, they come back. If you have no active shields left, any excess damage applied to your hull is normal. Okay, fine, fine. You know what this is really good on? Any Borg ship that's not a scout cube. Actually, just about any ship that has a fair number of shields, but really any Borg ship. You know, like the Tactical Cube, the Sphere, the Octahedron, the Oversized Cube. Um, yeah, 
because it's bonus damage. They're just going to hit your shields, and then your shields are going to come back. Uh, and it's this round, meaning they got to go through all your shields before you take damage, and then you get to come back. And even better if you have Colo on something. Uh, that's a real tough point fit to put Colo and one on something. Colo's still better put on the Sutherland. Uh, but you want to just make somebody's day really messy. Colo, one. Just, yeah, it hurts. It really does hurt. Uh, mess around with one. One is uh, annoying. And then the Borg upgrade. Dispersion Field. And if you've been in the game long enough, Dispersion Field was the card of nightmares because of the rules that it created, the rule problems it created. Uh, essentially, Dispersion Field is the card that says, you can't touch the rest of my stuff, you gotta go through Dispersion Field. It's the Bodyguard card. Um... Which is fine. It's okay to have one of those. Problem is, there's two of those. Koss is also one of those cards. So there were questions what happens with Koss and Dispersion Field. You could potentially have an infinite loop, but we don't have inf infinite loops in this game. So you pick one, one goes away. Not actual one, but one of those cards. Uh, and then the other can protect and, and all that. Um, but there's still questions of what about when I target everything and all of this stuff, and it's just a big, big headache. And I'm not explaining that in a review, so meh. Um, the other nice thing Dispersion Field does is you get to roll all your defense dice despite an enemy having scan token or tokens. Um, and all that for two points. Dispersion Field could have cost three, and it still would have been one of the most played cards. But it costs two. It can only go on Borg ships because it's a Borg... Borg icon. Which is good. I would have hated to see Borg uh, Dispersion Field on a lot of other ships because... It would have messed with a lot of stuff. Everybody would have been running it uh, more so than costs. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Dispersion Field now not played that much because uh, people still don't run Borg that much. And you can't put enough stuff on ships that Dispersion Field is worth protecting. But back before 90 point, or back before the 50 point rule when you could put 90 points worth of stuff on one ship. Dispersion Field was a go-to card. Because you want to keep your stuff safe. Made sense. So, uh, Yeah. Uh, this pack overall is bleh. Just bleh. Bad. But two cards save it. One in Dispersion Field. Um... Do you have to have any of that? No, I don't think so. I, I, I really think uh, Dispersion Field now is the card that you can probably get from somebody who was around back then. Because it's unique, you can pick it up. Everybody had one but got like three. And they don't need that many. One, same boat. Unique. Nice to have. And, and somebody will probably say... Yeah, here, take. Um, but they're fun cards. Well, one is at least fun in a bit of a messy way. Uh, but they're cards that can make the game more fun to play. And I like that. So this pack overall, fairly solid, fairly interesting. It's Scout Cube. I'd like to see the board get another Scout Cube um, because I, I think... Being a little more reasonably priced would be uh, even better for this really small ship. But it, it's an interesting pack, and I like it for that reason. So, uh, for a booster that was uh, fairly available, uh, if any of this sounded interesting, 
go check it out. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care.